Hey dudes, Rhino Crunch here today. Now I'm going to be doing an advanced guide in Escape from Tarkov. This is going to be a lot more advanced than my noob starter guide, and I think it's going to help a lot of people that are maybe coming into Tarkov for the beta and just getting into the game. Now I think there's a couple things that's important to mention before I get into the video. The first thing is, if you're new to the game, this video might be overwhelming to you, and you're better off starting at my noob starter guide video. I'll put links in the description to that, so you can go ahead and watch it and bring you up to speed for this video. Before I get into the actual video, I'm going to go over what the video is going to cover, and I'll also put links in the description to timestamps for different sections, so you can click on those timestamps for areas that are relevant to you. So maybe you know some of the stuff, you can just go ahead and click ahead. Now, what is the video going to cover? Today's video is going to cover what max level traders sell and which ones are worth maxing. This means that the traders are going to be at the highest reputation you can get with them, and it unlocks all the items they have for sale. I'll also go over items which you should never sell because some of the traders don't always trade for cash. They want very specific rare items that are hard to find in game. Don't worry, we'll get to where to find them and that later. We're also going to go over gun modding and weapon mastering. We're also going to go over the fastest way to level up. We're going to go over the best map for making money. We're going to talk about what every bug out bag should have in it or whatever gamma box should have in it necessary for every raid this does change on a raid by raid instance but we'll get to that later finally we're going to go over pro tips little things tips and tricks that i've learned along the way that i think should help all of you so let's go ahead and get into max level traders now, before we get into it, there's a couple things worth mentioning. First of all, Fence in this current beta build has no reputation level, no perks, absolutely not worth leveling him because there's no, there's no way to level him anyways. So don't worry about Fence. And Therapist as well, uh, she sells. The reason people like to level her is to get the Grizzlies, but in this version of the beta, you can actually get Grizzlies from Peacekeeper. Don't waste your money with Therapist. You can see she's level three. That's what I got from just passively leveling her. Uh, Painkillers will suffice. You don't need to get her to level two for the Morphine. I mean, if you want to, Morphine's more expensive. It lasts a little bit longer, but for the most part, save your money. Save your money. Don't waste your money on trying to level her. Uh, so let's get into it. We're going to get into proper. We're not going to cover every single item, but we're going to cover the important items. One quick thing worth mentioning as well in this current beta build, um, he has a limited supply of AK-74Ns that trade for one BlackRock, not three, not four, not six. There's a limited supply and you can see he's out right now. They go pretty quickly. So you're going to want to be here on the hour uh, on the reset. Now you can see the Keter trades for two uh, pump actions. Really easy, really easy to get those. Now here's the important thing. The snipers, all three of these snipers, which are rare to get, sometimes these will spawn on the scav spawns on customs as well. I've, I've heard, I haven't seen with my own eyes on shoreline, the scav spawns will actually have this SV-98. However, still pretty rare, still pretty rare that you're going to kill him, still pretty rare that he's going to fall off the roof, you're going to get out with it. Best way to probably get this gun if you want it really bad is to actually purchase it. So if you ever get rechargeable batteries, do not sell them to fence. Same thing with the large car batteries. You're going to want to hang on to these guys um, because you're going to want to get that SV-98. Also, VSS, air filters. Sometimes I'll see these air filters. These are probably one of the most... Uh, desired items in the game. Not only are they used for the VSS, they're used for the mags, and they're also used for headgear. So you're gonna wanna hang on to these air filters. He wants a trade up of five of these air filters and one of these uh, 324 times 42 uh, optics, Leopold. So, and you can buy this, but you just need to get the air filter. You cannot buy the air filter. There's no other way to purchase the VSS. There's no other way. I haven't seen a VSS spawn. I've heard of an AS Val, AS Val spawn on customs. Again, I've never seen it with my own eyes. That's about 200 raids that I've done on this version. Probably another 200 on the last version. So it's a pretty rare gun if I haven't seen it in all of those raids. If you're going to want to get it, the best thing you're going to want to do is hang on to these Geiger counters. And these MREs you can purchase from... Uh, I believe skier sells them. We'll get to that though. So, and these are easy to get. These MREs are easy to find. They're easy to purchase from fence if the uh, skier doesn't have them. But these Geiger counters, do not get rid of these. I see these in the fence all the time. 
And I feel your pain, dudes. Just hang on to these Geiger counters. In late game, you're going to wish that you had them so you can get this AS Val. And for the most part, that's it. Uh, you know, if you want to get the Sim4UB, which basically is just the Sim4U with the uh, with the suppressor, which you can also get with two gunpowder up here. Where is it? Right here. If you have two gunpowder, you can trade up for that. Not really worth it. Honestly, full-size AK is probably going to do you better. But again, it's all preference. Everybody has their own preference in gun. But this is an easy straight-up trade. You can buy these Comtech helmets. You can buy these Blackrock, which, by the way, the Comtech, although they say they work, they do not actually work in this version of the beta. Um, it's kind of a waste. So uh, don't don't wear those thinking that you're actually going to be hearing sounds because it's a placebo. It's kind of like the glasses. Right now, the glasses don't do anything. In the future, the glasses are actually going to block uh, the glare from the sun, which is super useful depending on what time of day it is. Uh, but right now, in this version, they don't do anything. It's just for looks. It's aesthetic aesthetics only basically so here's another big item i see sold to fence that you guys need to keep and that's the condensed milk this condensed milk is all over the place i know it sells for a lot but it's a lot more useful for a couple of reasons one you get the pso and two if you don't want to keep the pso you can take this and sell it to skier and kind of like level them up pretty quick um for early game that's huge i mean you get a ton of these all over the place these condensed milk and then you're going to level skier way faster um, ES lamps are also big, not only for backpacks, tries it backpacks. I see these in the, I see these being sold to fence all the time, but for grenades as well. Now, if you want to get the F1 grenades, that's going to require the UV lamps, which I also see sold to fence. So for the most part, for proper, you're going to want to hang on to the Geiger counters. You're going to want to hang on to the car batteries, rechargeable batteries. You're going to want to hang on to the air filters. You're going to want to hang on to the lamps. Uh, don't sell these defense guys. By the way, a little quick note, the F1 hand grenade is probably three times uh, larger blast radius with shrapnel than the uh, RGD. So uh, let's just say this is like uh, you're throwing like a golf ball and this is like you're throwing like maybe, I don't know, maybe a softball in the area. It's just blowing up the whole area. So so that's important to mention. Be careful with these. I've seen so many people talk to these throwing up. It's friendly fire included, which is funny, but at the same time kind of fucking annoying. So, uh, and this is max level proper. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. Uh, we're going to skip Elvira again, pointless. We're going to skip fence. Actually, we can do a quick check of fence. Uh, see if he has any items that players shouldn't be selling. See, like, here we go. Here's MREs right here. Um, but we really want to find like a gold chain or an air filter. We'll go ahead and refresh it. Maybe we'll get lucky on an air filter or gold chain. I hope that by the end of this video, I never see air filters or gold chains and fence again. And you guys save those. All right, we're going to go ahead and skip this. We'll come back to him. So let's go ahead and go into skier now. Now skier is our armor guy. Now armor, you can't get armor the way you would think you can get armor. He also sells the DVL straight up cash trade. SKS, this is early game. Pump shock on Sega. This is all straight up cash trades. Um, and this is again, this is where you can get your, uh, this is where you can get your optic to trade for the VSS. Scav backpacks. I believe he sells these at level two. I may be mistaken. I know at max level, obviously he's going to have them. These are a lot better than the regular MBSs because you can actually stick guns inside of these you can fit the shotgun you can see it's one by five and one by five so you can stick four shotguns in there or two full-size ak's or one and four and one ak etc etc so let's get to skier though a lot of people don't know this this is the only way to purchase fort armor if you guys don't know what fort armor it is it's essentially the end game for tarkov this is juggernaut armor from payday 2 this is the juggernaut from modern warfare armor this is like the no joke you get shot in this you can get shot 50 times not 50 times but it's pretty crazy how many times you can get shot in this and not give a fuck and keep walking like the terminator now i got a video of that actually if you search juggernaut in uh, on my channel you'll see i have full armor and i run factory with the m4 and i'm just rinsing the place with this armor um, but this is the only way to get it. It's extremely rare. Uh, seven gold chains is what it, he requires. I know they sell for a lot and it's an easy way to make 
a lot of money, but these gold chains are extremely rare. So hang on to these guys. Do not sell these defense. Also, it's important to mention that they do have the potential to spawn on scavs, but it's super, 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 super rare. Since this beta, I'm going to say I have about 200 raids completed. I have seen zero fort armor. I've seen some pack of armor, but I've seen zero fort armor. So really the only way to get it is other players killing them, obviously shooting them in the legs, melting their legs or buying it. So save on, you know, hang on to that, those gold chains. Uh, another thing important to mention, he has a much larger stock of Paka at a higher level. Level 2, I believe he only has maybe 50 of them, whereas the max level, he has 300 of them. And these go quick. If we reset this, I, I yeah, see there's seven of them gone right there by the end of the hour. Uh, you know, who I don't know how much more it's going to go, but it seems like it goes, it goes down less. Um, I imagine that as more people max... Uh, skier, we're going to see a lot more people buying this armor and it's going to be selling out a lot faster. I think there's probably very few people that have max skier right now. So, I mean, it's going down pretty quickly, but it's not, it'll probably last throughout the hour. Give it a week and I can't imagine this whole thing staying here. It'll probably get eaten up in five minutes. So, and then you have the headgear, the also OP headgear that just absolutely, absolutely is endgame for Tarkov. Five air filters is what is required. Um, it's almost not even worth getting the AS Val just to save your air filters for headgear if you don't have it. Um, but that's that's literally the only way to get it. Again, they also have the potential to spawn on scavs. 200 runs, never seen it. So super rare. You're better off getting it off players or buying it yourself. Hang on to these air filters. Don't sell them. Skier also sells these 60 round mags for the AK at max level. Proper sells them at level two, I believe. But it's kind of cool that he unlocks these if you don't have all of your uh, traders unlocked at once. At least somebody will have the 60 round mags, which is kind of nice. All right, so we're going to go ahead and exit out here. Let's go check fence again. Maybe we'll get lucky on like a UV lamp or something. Uh, I'm not seeing anything. I've seen gold chains. I've seen air filters. I've seen Geiger counters in here. They go pretty quickly. I know I'm not probably the only one doing this right now looking for these rare items. In the future, you'll actually be able to auction off the items, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we're not. I'm surprised someone actually sold him a Keter. Let's see one more. Maybe we'll get lucky on a gold chain. No, nothing. Let's see here. Come on, air filter gold chain. Nothing. All right. Now let's go into Peacekeeper. Again, uh, Peacekeeper is the one who's going to sell these Grizzlies, which if you didn't know, Grizzlies are the only med kit that will actually fix your fracture. If you have a fractured limb, uh, the order you have to fix it is fix the bleeding, stop the bleeding, then fix the fracture with the splint. With the Grizzly, you kind of cut out that splint process and you just drag and drop and it fixes the bleeding and the splint in one or the fracture in one go. So these are super useful um, and you can buy them at max level Peacekeeper. So save your money for from Elvira, just get Peacekeeper up. And also the gamma containers too. If you need uh, a larger gamma container, he sells them at max level. If you have the two by two, you can purchase the three by three from him for about 5K, which is a lot, but it's worth it. Um, and because there's about six items that fit perfectly in here for your bug out box. And we'll get to that later. So let's go down. We're going to scroll at the bottom. We're going to work our way up here. He sells the completely modified M4 a one. He's kind of selling it for a lot. These flash drives, save these graphics cards, save these toolboxes. You can buy, they're not really that rare. They're kind of all over the place. Graphics cards and flash drives are kind of rare though. Now, this might seem overpriced, except for the fact that there is one item in here that you cannot get anywhere else in the game. May seem silly, but if you're kind of like a gun slut like me, you're going to want to get it, and that's your grip, man. This is the only aftermarket M4 grip. I still haven't, I don't have the resources to get this yet, but I am saving up for it. So, uh, you know, this grip's rare. You know, it's what's the difference? It's, it's, I, I hope there's a reduction of recoil or something. I hope it's worth it. If not, if anything, I got an extra M4. So we're going to continue up the line here. We got the full size AK with, uh, for gold chains. Absolutely not worth it. You can build an AK exactly like this for way cheaper. Save your gold chains. Um, uh, MP5 for seven, for actually, I'm sorry, five, seven, four, and full size AKs. M4 for the semi-auto shotguns. These are huge. These are so easy to get. I'm actually working on those right now. I need one more and I can get another M4. 
Um, and this is level two. This isn't even max level. You can do this like early game. Once you get to level 10 and get skier up to level two reputation, you can start trading your semi-auto shotguns for an M4, which is a huge game changer. If you're fighting guys with shotguns at range and they and you have an M4, you're going to kick some ass with this gun. So I highly recommend rushing Peacekeeper just to do that. Silenced MP5, not really a fan of. Regular MP5, not a fan of. MPX, not a fan of. Uh, I haven't seen these SAS. I don't even know where to get these SASs. That's how rare they are. And the SSD, same thing. I have not seen either of these items. Luckily, though, since it's max level, you can just do a straight up purchase for it. Um, you can see this is a little bit modified. It has like the uh, different stock on it and it's suppressed. So it's almost worth it. Oh, and, and then it has a regular one actually too. So for 300 bucks more, you get the modified one. I don't know if it's worth it. I don't really like the MPXs. I'm more of an AR fan myself. So uh, you can just buy those straight up. Tries it bags, trade for e, uh, eight ES lamps. So definitely hang on to those lamps. Um, do not sell those to fence. And what else? Oh, the hard drives. These hard drives as well. Four of these hard drives is going to trade for a rig, which here's another trick on how to level up skier. These hard drives are all over the place. So you get four of these hard drives. You get one of these AVS uh, chest rigs. You sell this to skier for 10K. Plus you get the two condensed milk for the PSO. And then you, you're getting... 20k per sale or well per pso and chest rig sale so it goes pretty quickly with skier if you keep looting those items and keep you know leveling them up other than that these unlock these are uh you know the cqb stocks for the m4 um i don't know if you can stick these on the ak they're ugly as shit and they have a if you were to break down the stats like if you were to look at like say this versus a mo that's going to be comparable. I mean, it's not even worth it. So you got the recoil negative 37. It's got seven less recoil ergonomics plus seven ergonomics. So it has two higher, uh, two higher ergonomics. The only thing though, is this doesn't have the choke tube nor the, uh, rubber guard, which is going to be right here, which you're going to want to throw on the end of this. And then, so you're going to, you're going to stick this on the end of the the stock and then you're going to have an additional negative three recoil and an additional plus one ergonomic. So I don't think, I don't think these stocks are worth it. I kill people and I see that they have these, these atrocious looking M4 stocks on their gun. I mean, they kind of look cool, but uh, you're probably better off sticking with the Mo, uh, Mo stock just for stat wise. But again, you know, this is your world. You can, you know, mod whatever gun you want, however you want. Um, you know, don't let me, don't let me sway you. You're going to, you're going to do whatever you think is the best for you. So, and this, this also unlocks at the max level. This is my favorite optic. Um, absolutely amazing optic. Let me see if we can inspect it. You can kind of get a, oh, this is another little tip too. If you don't know what the, uh, if you don't know what the crosshair looks like, you can inspect it and zoom in. Um, if you're like, I wonder what crosshair that is. This is my absolute favorite though. This, cause it's the R it's the RCO from, uh, from Arma 3. So I, I love this optic, but that's a little trick too. I learned that um, you can inspect and see what actual optic it is, which is extremely useful when you don't know what optic is. This one's variable too. You can switch that around. Uh, and that's it. That's the traders. That's maxing uh, traders out. Uh, quick thing to mention, he sells his 60 round mags at max level, which are extremely useful for the M4. And uh, if I were to go, if, if I were new to the game and I wanted to get an advantage against other players, uh, the first thing I would level is Peacekeeper um, just to get just to get those M4s, just to be able to purchase those M4s for shotguns because those are really easy to get. Um, and then I'd probably move on to Skier for the armor and then Proper last. Proper goes pretty quick because he kind of buys all the other bullshit that nobody else buys, which is good. And... Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's, that's the, that's the traders. Let's check, let's check this really quickly. Maybe we'll get lucky on like a, we'll get lucky on like a ES lamp or a UV lamp or something. We can, I'll just give you guys an example. Hopefully by the end of this video, like I said, you guys know what you should keep and uh, don't ever sell that shit. Don't, don't ever sell the gold chains or, you know, I just, my heart goes out to you because I've, I've sold the Geiger counters. I didn't know the Geiger counters till I got max level and I could, I could totally have like three AS valves right now, but instead I have uh, an empty heart where AS valve should be. Doesn't look like anybody's in the mood to sell good shit to him. Here we go. Here's a little bit of stuff. Eh, not really worth it. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to move to the next section of the video. Now, before we get into the gun modding and mastering, I just want to mention a couple things. Um, 
Personally, for me, I, I made a very clear decision that I was going to get really good with one pistol because I wanted to be consistent with... You can see if you look through my stash here, I really don't have a lot of diversity. This is the gun cotton, the sniper shotgun cotton made for us, but there's not really a lot of diversity. I have a couple TT pistols. I have a ton of full-size AKs. I have, this actually needs to be sold, and then I have M4s and, you know, the Sega, which I never use. So, there is something to be said about getting good at one thing in this game, I think. And that's going to play into the mastering. Um, if we come over here to our skill level, you can see, or our skills, you can see the mastering over here is going to be important and later on. Right now, there isn't a lot to it. If you master right now... There's a few things to it. You get uh, different animations for reloading. You reload, your reload animations are faster. So there you can reload a lot quicker if you have the mastery all the way up to level three. But for the most part, nothing super important now. Now in the future, that's gonna change. So for example, we come back to our gear set and you see how it says 30 of 30. Well, aside from loading, you know, six or seven tracers into the end of the gun, to let your or the end of the mag to let yourself know that you're getting dry there's going to be no way to tell you're not going to be able to tab your inventory and see exactly how many bullets you have you're going to have to actually do the alt reload key and look at the mag now if your mastering is all the way up it's actually going to tell you in the bottom right it's going to say you have about 34 shots left or you have about 26 shots left um, as opposed to a general statement like half empty, half full, getting low. So that's going to be useful later on. That's not in yet. Also, another thing worth mentioning is different factions are going to be inherently better with different weapons. So the Russians are going to be better with the Russian weapons. The Americans are going to be better with the American weapons. That doesn't really play into anything right now, but in the future that will definitely matter. So that's something to keep in mind. If I could give any tip as far as which gun to use, you can see for the most part it at this wipe. Now, granted, last in, uh, in the alpha, I did try everything. You know, I, you can see here I kind of I tried a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. But for the most part, you can see I have more TT kills than any other weapon. And that's be or I mean, any other uh, sidearm. Um by you know three times as many as the Makarov and I think I was just using those until I lost them and I didn't buy any more I wanted to get good with the TT not just to get the mastering up but you just get to know the gun and that's your gun that's your pistol and the same thing can be said about the M4 once I realized it was kind of a battle back and forth I didn't know if I liked the AK or the M4 the AK was like good and then the m4 was bad and then the m4 was good and the ak was bad and then i finally just said fuck it i'm gonna stick with the m4 i like the m4 it seems to be the most consistent for me now there's other guys who love the ak so again it's all in preference there's no statistical advantage there's no competitive advantage uh it's all going to be in preference so we're going to come on over to the modding now we're not going to get into the uh every single variable of each gun and its parts for the most part, we're just going to do a general overview of how the modding works and just how you can improve your gun if you're looking to improve a specific section of it. So, for example, let's let's go ahead and uh, check out this M4. Now, uh, first place we can start, we can start at the grips. Let's go no grips. Actually, we can do this, and th that'll actually just put them in our inventory here. We'll do all four of them. Now, we'll go over to the inventory here. We could just do a side-by-side -side comparison of all three of these three completely different grips now the best way to do this is just go right click and then hit inspect right click and inspect right click and inspect now there is a few variables the first variable we're going to look at it's going to be weight you can see here this one weighs the most so and then this one weighs the middle amount and then this one weighs the least so this is this weighs the least this weighs the most um, and then we can also, we can sort it by recoil. This is minus 12 or 1.2 minus 1.75 minus 1.5. So this reduces, we're going to not sort it by weight. We'll sort it by which one reduces the most recoil. This one reduces the most recoil. Now, which one has the best ergonomics? This one actually does have the best ergonomics. I think this is why it's on my M4 is because for the most part, this one's the best. However, there is also one other factor that we're not playing into it, and that's aesthetics. Now, you can say, you know, tactical versus, you know, uh, 
you know, function, form over function. That's totally cool. That's why this stuff's in the game. That's why they put this, uh, this, this grip in here is because of the modding. If they wanted to give us a bunch of pre-made guns, then they would have, but they didn't. They gave us a bunch of ways to mod our guns, how we like it, how we want to make it look, how we want to make it function. It's up to us. It, it honestly really doesn't matter. If you're going to be in a firefight, you're not going to win the firefight because you have plus one ergonomics and minus 1.75 it's very 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 comparable i mean this is we're, we're talking fractions of a recoil percentage so it's all in preference dudes um i i chose this one because i think honestly i think it looked the coolest and it had the most recoil um actually i think i had the green one on here so it's all in preference it's it's that simple i've seen this uh i've seen this on the back of here too let me see here let's throw this i've seen this on the back of here too some people like the way that look now i don't like that doesn't look good we need a shorter barrel obviously for that we could probably get the tan one too but again it's 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 going to all be in preference there's going to be comparable differences to this let's go ahead we'll go ahead and inspect this too just so you guys get an idea. And this is exactly what I'm doing right now is exactly what you guys can do to find the gun that you like the most. Now, this is actually pretty big. This is, oh, this is, I think it's counting the choke tube. Hold on one sec. It's counting the choke tube versus the, uh, versus the stock, which we could pull that off too. Ah, eh, let's go like that. There we go. All right, let's do that again. Inspect, inspect. So here we go. This is, you know, this one weighs more. It has negative three recoil, negative 3.7 recoil. So this is 0.7 recoil. Uh, ergonomics plus nine. So it's actually 0 0.2, 0 0.7 less recoil, but this has two plus ergonomics, which I believe, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I believe the only thing that ergonomics really does is your snap to aiming. So the larger the weapon is, the less ergonomics it has, the the longer. And again, that's fractions of a second that we're talking about. We're not talking about, uh, you know, these are fractions of fractions of fractions. This is not going to change. You know, you're not going to lose a fight because you don't have the most stock versus the PDW stock. I think it'll definitely be noticeable if you have a bunch of shit uh, mods on there. Like if you were to get the ghetto version of the AK and then compare it to like a fully paid, you know, fully modded AK. But for the most part, it's, it's going to be comparable. Uh, let's go ahead and put this stuff back here. Now we're not going to get in the AK modding. You get the general idea for it. I like this. I like this one because, um, it allows me to stick the, what is this called? The AFG M lock. It's the only handguard that will take the AFG M lock. So that's why I like it. And there's three different colors. There's actually four different colors. There's a plum version of this that I haven't seen in this version of the beta, but there's a bunch of these Mo hand guards. They look cool to me. I like them. So I got, you know, I got the desert storm one. I got the freaking green one and I got two gray ones. And, um, I just, I like the way it looks and it, you know, it's low re recoil. Some people may not like the way it looks. Some people will say, you know what? I want to black mine out. I don't really like that. I want to stick you know, that looks fucking sick too. So again, it's going to be comparable. It's not going to be, uh, you know, noticeable. That actually looks really nice. And you can actually get a black stock for this too. Um, but let's just go ahead and compare these really quickly. I did an AK versus M4 comparison. This is just kind of an update to that. There are some other variables like weight that I didn't cover. Uh, and there's also, you know, just the ability to inspect individual items and you know say all right well what's the difference between these two suppressors you know what's the difference between the ak suppressor and the m4 suppressor well first of all this one's way more expensive okay so we can just start off on the price it's another factor um base accuracy is negative one ergonomics is negative two this is negative three uh muzzle velocity is plus 0.75 plus 0.75 so they're pretty comparable for the most part. Uh, this one weighs a lot more. Look at this one weighs 0.4 kilograms more. And this one has only, you know, negative one ergonomic. So again, compare, you know, comparable there. This isn't game breaking, game changing. I'm going to lose a firefight because I got a, I got this suppressor versus this suppressor. So, uh, and that's, that's the gist of modding and gun mastering. 
Um, I hope this helps some of you kind of understand how it works. Again, just pro tips of getting in the habit of getting really good with one gun is going to benefit you later on. Being able to pull your mag out, look and say, okay, I have 20 shots left because you will not be able to see these numbers. Also, another tip, you know, of sticking tracer rounds in the last five of your uh, magazine. Now, the way you're going to do that is you're going to stick the you're, the first five are going to be the last five, if that makes sense. So, for example, for uh, AK round or AK mag, you're going to stick five tracers first on an empty mag, and then the rest of the ammo later. And as you start hitting the tracers, you're going to say, "Okay, here, five, four, three, two, one." So, and again, that's all preference. If you're a badass, you can stick one or two in. You know, boom, I'm done. So, all preference modding. Don't let you know. Don't don't be fooled. Don't don't believe the hype. Everybody has their own gun that they're the best with and every gun is every gun modded is going to be completely different from everybody else's and you guys experiment. Don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to lose these guns because that's part of the fun is getting them back and you know making the money to get them back. So that's going to bring us to this next section which is the best map for making money in Tarkov. So before I talk about my personal favorite map for uh, getting the best money as a solo, let's talk about the fastest way to level. So one of the quickest ways you can level in Tarkov is by taking everything out of your gamma container and this is also another way to get money and then run factory with a hatchet. Basically just run it, run it, run it, run it, just keep running factory. Exit as quick as you can, stop by the green boxes, load whatever you get in the green boxes into your gamma container, and then get the hell out as quick as possible. Now that's going to be the fastest way to level. It's also a pretty good way to make money. Now personally, I don't like doing that. I feel like uh, it's it gets really boring to me, it gets really grindy, and it's just not fun for me. I'd rather just full clear a map as a solo or full clear a map as a squad and really explore the map and find new things, find new spots, maybe get lucky on some of the spawns and just enjoy my time in the game. For me, the hatchet runs aren't really enjoyable, but I totally do see the value in it. So if you're looking to level fast and make money uh, quickly, that's a great way to do it is those uh, hatchet factory runs. Now, if you're looking to make the most amount of money and kind of have a, you know, have a good time doing it, for me, I say customs. Customs is absolutely the most loot rich environment there is in Tarkov. It eight filing cabinets, 12 green boxes, multiple duffel bags, five plus duffel bags, multiple medical bags, tons of cars, probably 20 to 30 cars you can loot, grenade boxes, multiple weapon spawns, multiple rooms, and two different buildings just have tremendous amount of all sorts of stuff, um, not to mention the computers, not to mention the racks at the end. I mean, if you were to full clear customs now, I've never done a full clear on customs. Every time I try to full clear, I get about halfway through or maybe even a quarter of the way through and I end up killing a player or I end up getting fully looted, you know, a quarter of the way in, half of the way in. I think it would be most efficient if you're in like maybe a three-man squad or a two-man squad where you guys can hit everything and then everybody gets full as opposed to one guy getting full early on. But Customs has, you know, it has the AS Val spawn. It has the AK spawn in room 218. If you didn't know, uh, you're definitely going to want to get that 218 and even the 220 key. The 220 key is great because it has... Uh, you know, it has the duffel bag and the coat on the wall and the money on the table. And there is just a tremendous amount of loot. If you were to loot customs and let's just forget the, forget the fact that there's 15 plus scavs on it that you can get weapons off of. If you were to loot customs and you were to not take any of the scav gear, you're looking at about a hundred thousand dollar run per run. If you were to not full clear it, but just get full and maybe even cherry pick. That means when you're in the filing cabinets, you're throwing away the junk and you're keeping the good stuff, the stuff that you know is for selves a lot, or even like the condensed milk that you know that you can trade to proper, like we talked about earlier for a PSO. And that just comes with the experience of, uh, you know, items. And even if you were looking to find specific items that you wanted to trade for, 
Customs is a great map. There's tons of stuff all over the place, so I highly recommend checking Customs out. Now, I'm not going to go over the whole thing. It would literally take an hour, two hours plus to talk about every single loot location, every single little tidbit. What I will do instead is I'll put a link in the description to a map that has uh, the majority of the spawns that's going to be extremely useful for you. And it'll show you, you know, if you want to, one round, you want to go one route. And the next round, you want to go another route. Maybe skip the dorms, then hit the dorms. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, it is extremely valuable map, though, for making a ton of money. I mean, literally 100,000 runs every run. And you can do that in, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. You know, 100,000 every 20 to 30 minutes. Now, granted, it's, it's not just that. You know, you could do the hatchet runs in factory and probably make a decent amount. You probably make a lot more, to be honest, in factory. But, you know, you're getting killed. You're, you know, you're running around with the hatchet. I don't really feel like that's the way the game's meant to be played. And I feel like they're going to eventually phase out the hatchet gamma runs. Because the gamma box isn't intended to kind of exploit and fill up and then use that to, you know, gain supplies from. The gamma box, I feel like they put in the game, if you find something super rare and you're like, fuck man, I just spent 35 minutes on this map. I don't want to lose this gold chain. I don't want to lose this optic that I just found that's super rare. That's what I feel like the gamma box is for. It's not really intended to do these you know, hatchet uh, factory runs. But it's in the game now, so obviously, you know, use the hell out of it before the, the devs remove it. Uh, but so that's going to be the best map. So links in the description to that map. And let's get into uh, what every bug out bag should have in it. So let's talk about the gamma container or your bug out bag. This is absolutely uh, stuff that I've learned from experience that you're going to want to keep in it. Grizzlies, 100%. You keep your Grizzlies in it. These are very expensive. They're rare to find in early game. They're not extremely rare, but they're rare enough to, uh, you can't, you know, they're not all over the place. So you're going to want to keep those in there. It's going to act as your, uh, you know, it's going to stop the bleeding. It's going to fix the fracture. You're going to want to keep that in there. You're also going to want to keep two painkillers, uh, whether it's morphine or painkillers. The reason for that is, is a lot of the times because of the spawn mechanics, from my experience, what happens is you get in a firefight early on and then boom, your legs are broken. If your legs are broken, you cannot run. You literally have to limp your ass to the end of the instance. Now, if you don't have any painkillers on you, um, you're screwed. You have to walk the whole way. Not only that, but it's super blurry too. And this is the same. This holds true to if you break an arm, you're, it's going to be blurry. Even if you fix the fracture, even if you stop the bleeding, it's going to be blurry. So what morphine and painkillers do is they kind of sharpen your senses. They kind of sharpen that post-processing that exists from these fracture effects. So you can actually see what the fuck is going on and you can not only see, but you can run again on your broken leg even though, you know, you broke your leg and you could run 30 seconds later is kind of silly. But you're going to want to keep two of these. One painkiller is not going to get you to the end of a shoreline or customs, and neither is one morphine. You're going to want to keep two. Trust me, if you kill a guy early on and he has a fuck ton of gear, the last thing you're going to want to do is try to limp your ass the last, the hardest part of the instance, which is like the last fucking three minutes of the instance where all the scabs are on shoreline and customs, you're not going to want to limp that out. You're, you're going to want to have the mobility to run into cover. And, uh, that that's going to come with having multiple morphines or multiple painkillers. And the only reason I like using morphine is because they last longer. And that's, that's pretty much the only difference. They last a little bit longer. Now you're wondering why the hot rods in here, this is, this also comes from experience. You're going to want to keep something that can hydrate you. Now let's say worst case scenario. Again, you come into the match, you wreck two guys, you wreck three guys. All three of them have Ford armor on them. All three of them have fully tricked out M4s, but there's a problem. They blacked your stomach out. Your dehydration is now dropping at a dramatic rate. You're, you're ticking from 100 to 99 to 98, and it's going down quick. I have found that in my experience, if you have at least one item on you, you loot as quick as you can, and you drink that shit uh, once, you know, once it gets down to about you know, danger zone, like 20 or 30, you can make it out of whatever instance 
alive. Okay, so you can make it out of shoreline. You can make it out of customs, even if this happens right at the very start. Uh, but you got to go. You got to leave immediately. Now, if you want to play safe, you could hold. Uh, you could hold two of them, and you could change this bug out as a core. You know, you don't need for factory. You're not going to need two morphine. You're definitely not going to need two red bulls. So you could replace that with maybe grenades or whatever. But for the most part, this you know shorelines are custom. You're going to need this. The other benefit of keeping a second morphine is if your buddy didn't bring his for whatever reason, the game glitches out. Maybe he forgot, maybe whatever reason, uh, you're going to have an extra morphine from him. So that's extremely, those are extremely, extremely useful. And I had, I had to learn those the hard way, both of those, both the morphine, not just having one painkiller on me, but having two, you absolutely need two. And then, uh, you know, the dehydration is just huge. It's the same thing as blacking your leg out. You're going to want something to combat that and get the hell out of the instance as quick as possible. Now, the first pro tip I'm going to give, which I think is the most important, is to master the map and master the scav. There's a feature in the game that allows you to play each map against the scavs only with no players. It's called offline PVE only. I highly suggest that you get into these matches because anything that you lose or anything that you gain is non-existent. It's a separate single player only mode that is only available in the beta. When the full game releases, this mode is not going to be in. So now is your time to learn the map and learn the scavs as best you can. It's also a great way to test out different gun mods, different gun configurations, and get an overall feel for the gunplay. I highly recommend you use this mode before it's gone. Now the next pro tip I can give you is to find your playstyle. Depending on what game you come from, you're already going to have an inherent playstyle just for a shooter. If you're an Arma 3 player, I think you're going to be a lot more tactical, a lot more slower on your push. If you're coming from like Call of Duty or like Counter-Strike, you're not going to be afraid to push objectives, push corners, push walls, and get in on places. But don't be afraid to try either one of the styles. There's a bunch of different people that play this game differently, whether it's run and gun, whether it's camp. This game isn't meant to be played a specific way. If you want to sit on the bridge and wait for 10 minutes for the players to cross over and pick them off one by one, that works if you want to run across the map with an assault rifle that's really loud and intimidating and just start wrecking players and test your luck on those pushes. That works as well. I think finding a nice balance between being extremely patient and slow and knowing when to be tactical and push situations is really important for being successful in Tarkov. It also ties into my next pro tip, which is using the scavs to your advantage. Now you can either use the scavs to your advantage as a player or as a scav. One of the things that scavs like to do is they patrol areas. When you're a scav, you can use this time to see their patrols so that when you come back as a player, you can actually see which way they patrol. Not only that, but when you're a scav, you can also use them to your advantage by playing on players' inability to know where you are as a player scav. And also, if you want to use these scavs as kind of like guard dogs, for example, on the customs bridge section, there's two scavs that patrol up and down the bridge. If you don't kill them when you cross and maybe you take an alternate route, you can use those scavs to know that other players are crossing the land section of the bridge as opposed to the actual bridge section. The final pro tip is to choose wisely. There's two important variables between selecting a bear and a USEC. The bear has the ability to taunt the USEC and other scavs, whereas the USEC doesn't really have any benefits other than having a really nice green camo and being silent when he throws grenades. The bear, every time the bear throws a grenade, he screams out in advance, letting everyone know in proximity that he's about to chuck a grenade. Whereas the USEC can throw it silently without anyone knowing, allowing you to cook it for a little bit. However, the bear's bonus is being able to taunt, which is extremely useful. So choose wisely on whatever you think you're going to use more. And that concludes the advanced tutorial on Escape from Tarkov. I hope this helps some of you. Make sure to drop a like if you learned something new. Also, if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more Escape from Tarkov videos, make sure to subscribe. And if you'd like to see a more in-depth guide on looting or gun modding, post in the comments what you would like to see. And I will be reading and replying to those. I hope this helps you guys kind of understand a little bit more about Tarkov and what direction you need to take. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. He's up on that second. I don't think so. I think he went inside. He's on that second floor.